Hi everyone, in this lecture we'll be looking at another fundamental concept in thermodynamics and that is work. Work. And work is energy transferred to or from an object by means of a mechanical force acting on the object. So you could see here F representing the force and then we'll see that there is a displacement. In, I mean, there is a displacement in terms of um, distance whenever the force acts on, uh, on an object. And based on this, I mean, looking at this, um, um, depending on the direction of the force and the, depending on the direction of the object as well, work can either be positive or negative. So work is typically dependent on the direction in which the force is being exerted. So based, if you look at um, A, B, and C, you see that, that the car is moving in the forward direction. The person pushing the car is moving in the same direction. So looking at this, we can say that the force, I mean, the work is positive because the displacement um, is in the same direction as um, the force being exerted. If you look at the second one, the force and displacement are not the same direction. I mean, look at um, the force. Um, there, look at um, if you look at the, the displacement is in this direction. Force is in that direction. So based on that, we are saying we um, is not the same. And the third scenario, if looking at the third scenario, we can see that force and displacement are, are perpendicular. So in this case, we we'll say that uh, work is positive. In this case, that they're in opposite direction, we we'll say it's negative. In this particular case, it's zero. Um, it's zero. This is reiterated in figures A to A, B, C, and D as well. We we'll see the same thing happening here. When they're in the same direction, we we'll say it's greater than zero positive. When they um, yeah, in the same direction, still in this particular case, it's the same direction, even though it's not directly in con I mean, it's not um, in direct contact or yeah, like what we see in scenario A, but you still see it's in the same direction. Is that there, there's just a tilt. So this is positive. That is positive. And in this particular case, it's perpendicular. There's nothing happening between the where the force is being exerted and the um where the force is being exerted and where uh, and the object on which the force is being exerted. So work is work done is zero here, and in this particular case, it's negative. So work associated with change in volume. At constant pressure, I mean, remember we saw in the previous class uh, that a process that where the pressure remains constant is isobaric, isobaric. So, um, so we can have changes in we can have changes in um in in volume within a cylinder changes in volume so if when there's a reduction in volume we'll say that um the we say that there's compression so we have compression when there's reduction in volume and then we have expansion when volume increases so we can either have expansion or um, we can have expansion or compression but either way while the volume is changing so while the volume is changing here we have um, volume increasing we have volume um, decreasing but as far as the as far as the pressure is constant um, concerned the pressure remains constant the pressure is constant so what um we've seen that fact you know that um so we've seen the isobaric um reaction so based on that the equation can be integrated you know uh, until we get um so we've indicated already that we have an isobaric reaction so this we should read p v minus v we have v two minus v one so we have that if you go through the um, entire integration process and remember as we mentioned earlier on we are zooming we are assuming that the process is isobaric. So we arrive at this equation, which is W equals P V2 minus V1. So um, take note of that equation. We'll be using it to work an example later on. So we've said that this describes, so what we see here describes work done under, so take note, this is work done. Um, what this equation describes work done 
um, work done under isobaric process. And then um, if we uh, moving on, um, so we've okay we've alluded to this earlier on the fact that the volume can either um be uh, the volume can either be decreased compression or it can be increased so taking looking back at that equation w so if you were to take that equation um here w equals p v2 minus v1 so if you look at that equation so what this tells us that when the volume decreases so when you have decrease in volume so in inevitably w will be negative so if you look at that equation so once this is once this there's a decrease here this will be negative and if there is an increase in that if there's an increase there we can be rest assured that w will be positive so that so we can either have positive or negative work done we remember we also indicated that um, earlier on when we looked at the um, how um, work can either be positive or negative depending on the direction of the displacement on the direction on the displacement so the pressure volume um relationship you know is represented using this what we call the pv diagram the pv diagram so that shows us an area under the curve the area under this actually describes the work done so um we'll be working um an example will be um, we'll be solving an example just to consolidate this theory in um in part two so please watch out for the other recording so i haven't said that so we've seen isobaric process we've seen work done on the isobaric process but we have another process which we call polytropic process polytropic process so if you remember in isobaric process we have p remaining constant and we have v changing but in polytropic process the and the isobaric process also um represents the relationship between p and v so polytropic also represents the the pv relationship but the difference here is that the p can also the p also varies so p varies v also varies so this is what we have in the polytropic process so uh, um, similar to what we did earlier on the work under this area can be i mean the um the the area under the curve can be used to describe the work done and with uh with um after um integration and the rest you arrive at this formula which is pv raised to power n equal to c so from the plot and from the plot and then getting the antilogs we arrive at pv raised to power n equal to c which describes different states of a process when pv so pv pv remains constant but P and V are changing. So this relationship, P multiplied by V remains constant, but P changes. So hence, we can have P1, V1, P2, V2, P3, V3, and on and on like that. But the um, the but when you have the product of the two, it remains constant. And the N is called the polytropic. The N value here is called the polytropic or expansion or comprehension, um, compression um, exponent or index. And it ranges from zero to infinity. So it ranges from zero to infinity. Let's look at that and use it to describe the other processes we saw in previous class. So for example, when N is equal to zero, when n is equal to zero so let's substitute we, we can either use this equation or that equation but I mean, this results um this results into that so we can either use the two so if we are to use um the this the one here when n is equal to zero what that means is that p2 over p1 will be equal to so remember when n is equal to zero anything raised to the power of zero becomes one so v1 over v2 becomes one and then if you cross multiply that it say it means p2 equals p1 p2 equals p1 what is that telling us p is the pressure is constant so that is that what that is telling us 
which is isobaric condition or isobaric process. Um, let's use this same. Let's use the uh, a different formula. Put n here. Then we have p v. So um, n equal to zero rather. So if n equal to zero, and then we have c. So what does that give us? So that means um, v v not v raised to power zero becomes one. So that means p is constant. So the, um, it's still talking saying the same thing that the process is isobaric. So we are just trying to see the fact that it can use a polytropic process to describe those other types of processes we've talked about earlier on. That's one. The other thing I'm trying to show here, we're trying to see here is the fact that as the end varies, the, 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 the state of the process varies. As the end varies, the state of the process varies. So let's try another one when n equals to 1. So let's use that. We say, so if n equals to 1, then P2 over P1 becomes V1 over V2. If you cross multiply, that means you have P1 V1 equals P2 V2. If you remember in your ideal gas law, so this will be talking about constant temperature. So we have P1 V1 equals P2 V2. And if you were to um, use this formula, so it becomes P V equals C. So it says it means P V remains constant. So if you were to if you remember your um, ideal gas law of PV is equal to NRT. So that is so we can say that the temperature is constant. That is an isothermal process. So let's look at the um, uh, let's look at another scenario. So we've looked at n equals to zero scenario. We've looked at n equals to one scenario. Let's look at n equals to infinity scenario. So isothermal constant temperature. So constant temperature. Um, isobaric constant pressure. So um, this constant pressure constant temperature. So let's look at the third scenario. So in the third scenario here, we can have, um, remember, we've, we've, we've just picked a couple of scenarios. Um, it's a wide range. So let's look at infinity. So um, at infinity, P2, P1, that means V1, V2 raised to power infinity. What does that tell us? When V1 and V2 raised to power infinity, P2, P1 becomes, P2 and P1 become negligible. So P2 and P1 become very negligible. So this, on this side, we, might, we, uh, we, we, this can cancel out. So we have one and then it becomes V1 equals V2. V1 equals V2. And then let's try and use this, um, formula again so we let's do we're just simp um, simplifying it pv that raised to power infinity equals c as we saw in this in the previous case um if v is a uh, um is raised to power infinity which is huge you know it means p becomes negligible so if p becomes negligible we can say it's p naught raised to um, p naught v equals c it means v is constant so v1 equals to v2 of v is constant what is that telling us isochoric process isochoric process when volume is constant so we've seen those three the scenarios um that are how we can use polytropic process to describe different processes you know as n varies between zero and infinity as it varies between zero and infinity. So um, just to consolidate that, we'll, work, um, we'll look at an example in the second part, in the second part. So work in the polytropic process after, um, so if you uh, remember, we've seen work on the isobaric process. Now I want to look at work on the polytropic process process similar to what we did there you know we can um that there, there can be integration and so we um we also say that the work will be the area under this curve and then finally we will arrive at this e we arrive at this equation so this is equation describing work under work under polytropic process work at polytropic 
process. So we've seen work add isobaric process. So this is a formula for, for that. And then we'll use it to solve another um, example um, as we um, at later on. Um, now let's look at another process called hyperbolic process. Hyperbolic process. Um, hyperbolic process, when you hear hyperbolic, it's a particular, it, um, hyperbolic process is, um, you, 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 you know what, um, you talk about a curve, you know, something, you know, it's, it has a curvature, hyperbolic. So, um, as described earlier, we said that when n is equal to 1, we saw that earlier on, we get an isothermal process. So, then we begin to wonder that is hyperbolic same as isothermal? Um, yes and no. Hyperbolic process is a subset of isothermal process. It's however specific. So, hyperbolic process is specific for expansion and compression of a vapor. So it's specific for expansion and compression of a vapor. And it also emphasizes on PV remaining constant. It emphasizes on PV remaining constant. Unlike in the, um, so, so you could see that when we talk about PV remaining constant, we can also still equate it to NRT, you know, our ideal gas law. But the emphasis for hyperbolic is one, vapor, and also PV remaining constant. Meanwhile, generally for isothermal, the emphasis is on constant temperature. And also the working medium is gas. So we've said the working medium in hyperbolic, we've said is vapor, vapor. And then we're saying the working um, medium for isothermal is gas. So the working for isothermal is gas. So that is the um, slight difference. So I'll leave you, I'll leave the remaining, I'll leave you to go through to peruse um, the remaining um, slides while I work on um, the examples, you know, for um, examples one to four, just to consolidate this knowledge. All the best.